Norway is a land of fjords and mountains and polar bears, but you won't find any of those in the Norway of the Western Hemisphere. This is Norway, Illinois, tough to find on a map. It's not even a town, really. It's unincorporated, 65 miles southwest of Chicago. The oldest permanent Norwegian settlement in America. David Johnson is president of the Norsk Museum. He says this is where Norwegians settle in 1833. Because of the farmland was good. Yeah. Within the next 80 years, about 25% of Norway came to America. There's a store, a church, and between them, a road. So Abraham Lincoln would come down this road on the stagecoach? Yeah, or the buggy and mule or whatever, <laughs> whatever he had, you know. Life is simple. People are friendly. The land is fertile. In times of war, it's a reminder of what Americans fight for. And a pastor and a scientist from these parts help the war effort with vision and wisdom. The atomic bomb drops on two cities in Japan in August of 1945, killing 355,000 people. Most are civilians. But what if Hitler had obtained the bomb first? With pagan pageantry, the district leaders from all over Germany swore personal allegiance to him. Hit a story in the Chicago Tribune reveals Hitler is ahead of American forces in developing the atomic bomb. His heavy water plant is located somewhere in the mountains of Norway. The story captures the attention of Reverend Christian Christensen, who is from the country of Norway, but lives not too far from Norway, Illinois, in the town of Gardner. He visits the local newspaper editor. Yeah, it was top secret. John Weiss collects interesting stories for the Route 66 Association of Illinois. Our military knew about it, but they didn't know of how they could destroy his plant. And the, that's what the reverend says. I think I know how they can get in there. Because of the, the, the geography or what? what? Yeah, the, the waterways that were below it. But he grew up in that area. He knew the hills, the terrain. He knew the water. He was an ex-sailor. After one of his Sunday sermons, Reverend Christensen came home to his house here in Gardner, Illinois, that still stands today. He met with two naval officers who spread out a war map across his kitchen floor. With a red pencil, the reverend marked key locations on the map that he remembered from his time growing up in Norway. We do know they used the Operation Gunner side, it was called, and British commandos were able to get in there and destroy Hitler's heavy water plant. Was it because of the reverend? Could be. Good evening. Stay where you are. The top secret operation in 1943 is the plot behind a more fictional account in the 1965 film, Heroes of Telemark, starring Kirk Douglas. One thing we do know is that he did receive thanks at the, at the end of the war from the King of Norway. So something took place. How much they used of, of his information, that we'll never know. Reverend Christensen dies in 1947. When the story is no longer top secret, the newspaper editor in town writes the story in 1948. I heard about this and I said, well, I'd like to see that front page story. I mean, this is pretty remarkable, but nobody had one. Then I got a call from one of the fellows here in town and he says, you know, if you go over to the church where he was the minister, hanging on the wall is a plaque. This plaque was found in the back of the altar when there was a trap door, they were doing some painting. So they pulled the altar out and they said, well, what's this? And they opened it up and lo and behold, here's this plaque with the front page story written by a man who was there. Reverend Christensen never seeks praise or even attention, but his descendants and community are proud. What a man, I wish I would have been, had the chance to meet him. Back in Norway, Illinois, 40 miles northwest of Gardner, the church is transformed into a museum to tell the stories of people like Reverend Christensen. He's part of this submarine mine depot. And it now features a permanent exhibit for a scientist named Holger Nelson Toftoy, who once lived a couple of miles away. As a child, he likes to tinker 
And at the age of 14, he built his own little gas-powered car. As a colonel in the Army, military officials turned to him for a top-secret mission, Operation Paperclip. These look like old military documents that at one point were confidential. The documents at Norway's Norsk Museum tell the story. With the war about over, the Russians and Americans desperately want Germany's technology behind the V-1 and V-2 rockets. The Russians and Americans are in a race to apprehend the German scientists behind Hitler's weapons program. The U.S. gets there first. The vast uh, scientific and technological effort. That Toftoy meets with the head of Hitler's missile program, Werner von Braun. General Toftoy, he was a colonel at the time, he was sent to evaluate the system. He interviewed Werner von Braun to see if they'd like to work for us and start our program. There are 3,000 German scientists. Operation Paperclip approves bringing just the best 100 to the U.S. Toftoy takes 127. So they were trying to get all they could out to America before then. I guess they had filled up like 300 boxcars full of parts. Got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the lunar the, the plan? They want to use the technology to go to the moon. But why would the Germans working for Hitler be willing to help? They said that England, they didn't care for the Russians, they didn't trust at all. In France, they didn't have the technology already. Ours was the best choice. It was important to get these scientists over here to start this program, not only just then for missiles, but also I think he had the vision of going to the moon and using it far into the future. Robert Toftoy's father, was the general's cousin. And he really was the one that started this space program in the United States, he really was. And for that younger generation that doesn't remember, what was at stake in that space race? It put us way, way ahead in the time schedule. It's just north of here about 10 miles. Eleanor is also a relative. We were very proud of him. He graduated from West Point and then got into the service and he always said that they would be able to go to the moon they called him Mr. Missile. Mr. Missile is featured in this Life magazine from 1956. What was Life magazine trying to do here? Just trying to uh, keep America on top of what's going on with the missile program and the uh, space program. This is part of a permanent exhibit at the Norse Museum along with all the formerly confidential documents. What was top secret back then isn't now. <laughs> yeah, well that's great that we can read about it. Yeah. In these towns where the flashiest thing is a railroad crossing, people take pride in two men, a pastor who helps destroy Hitler's atomic weapons program and a scientist who helps the U.S. ultimately win the space race. They're not motivated by glory. They know what's at stake and use their insight to preserve freedom from Norway to Norway. Norway.